Hello, this is Hannah, and welcome to the Becoming Who You Are podcast. Each episode focuses on a topic to do with personal development and self-growth. For more information about Becoming Who You Are, you can look at the website, which is at www.becomingwhoyouare.net. You can also email me with your questions and comments at hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net. So I wanted to start this episode with a quote. This is by Henry Winkler. Your mind knows only some things. Your inner voice, your instinct knows everything. If you listen to what you know instinctively, it will always lead you down the right path. I'll say that again. Your mind knows only some things. Your inner voice, your instinct knows everything. If you listen to what you know instinctively, it will always lead you down the right path. So I wonder if you're like me and you've ever had one of those moments when you think you trust your gut and then you look back several hours slash weeks slash months slash years later and you shake your head and ask, what was I thinking? I think most, if not all of us, have been there, and we hear a lot in our society about trusting our instincts and how it's really important to trust our instincts, but moments like these, we might look back and think, you know, sometimes our instincts aren't always right. Well, that's not strictly true. Our instincts are usually right. It's just that sometimes stuff gets in the way of our instincts that can cause problems. And this is the stuff that masquerades as an instinct and says, of course you can trust me, I'm a gut instinct. And it unfortunately leads us sometimes to make less than optimal decisions. This stuff is more specifically different voices and parts of our personality. In other words, it's the voices in our head. We frequently hear jokes that people who hear voices in their heads are slightly mad. But actually, I think... Hearing voices in your head is a perfectly normal thing to happen. You know, we've all seen little cartoons of the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other, and the angel's going, eat, you know, sorry, the devil's going, eat the cake, and the angel's going, no, don't eat the cake, think of your diet. And this is what I mean by voices in our heads. And so I actually think that people who don't have those voices are kind of missing out. So what are these voices? Well, they can be different things. Some voices, especially childlike voices, are stuck in different moments in time, particularly moments when we've been really hurt, upset, or angry. For instance, if you were called stupid as a child and someone uses that same insult as an adult, it might bring back some of the hurt that you felt in the past. You'd know on a logical level that anyone calling you stupid now is totally out of order, but you might also have historical feelings that are stronger than that logic. While some voices are stuck in the past, other voices have been shaped by people we've met, especially people who were influential figures in our life. Family, friends, teachers, colleagues, bosses, these people all make a difference. And for that reason, I am very careful who I let into my life, especially people who are in my sort of inner circle of friends. This is simply because I know that in one form or another, they will end up in my head. And as we grow up, Different voices take on different roles, and we might find that we have an internal comforter, an internal motivator, a punisher, a manager, or a problem solver. And unless we become aware of these voices and their respective roles, we might mistake them for our gut instinct. So these voices manifest in our thoughts. The the thoughts that say, go me, when we do something that we're proud of, or get critical when we make a mistake, these are the voices. They're the thoughts that make judgments and evaluations about other people, and the thoughts that weigh up each decision we make, from what to eat for breakfast to our next career move. These thoughts can be useful, comforting, or unfortunately, especially in the case of negative self-attacking thoughts, difficult and distressing to experience. They might not always agree with each other either. Sometimes one thought will be more dominant than other thoughts. Other times it will be like a bar fight in our heads, with each voice shouting over the others, but with no single one audible above the noise of the next. The key thing about these voices is that they're here for our self-protection. It might not always feel like that, especially when there's a voice inside telling you you're not good enough, that we're lazy, we're a failure, or so on. However, if we think about the underlying motives of these voices, they are all working for our self-protection in the best way they know how. 
For example, if you decide to apply for a certain job vacancy, you might start writing out your personal statement, tailoring your resume and researching the position until that voice comes up, that voice that we've all heard at one point or another. Do you really think you're qualified for this position? There will be hundreds of other applicants going for it. I'm not sure you've really got anything more to offer than the next person. Well, you're getting a bit big for your boots, aren't you, looking at this kind of role? And so on. At which point, another voice, one that really wants you to go for a job, chimes in and starts arguing. Or perhaps you just become discouraged altogether and sadly close your CV file, thinking maybe you'll be qualified in two years. Exactly how this voice is helping might not be immediately obvious. However, when you view it from the perspective of self-protection, it becomes clear that this voice feels uncomfortable about you stepping outside your comfort zone and risking rejection. It's trying to protect you by keeping you where you are in the safety of familiarity. It's stopping you taking risks that might put you outside your comfort zone and that might open you up and leave you vulnerable to other people criticizing you, rejecting you, and all the uncomfortable feelings that come with that. So if we have all these voices, what exactly is our gut instinct? The example that I just talked about shows that although all these voices have your best interests at heart in their own ways, they can lead us to make decisions and take action that in the long run isn't going to help our personal growth, our happiness levels or help us to achieve our life goals. In my experience, my gut instinct is a voice I call myself. This is the part of me that exists now. It isn't stuck in the past, it isn't unconsciously shaped by other people from my past or present, it's just me. Imagine your mind is like a courtroom. The self is the judge. It listens to what other voices have to say, weighs up the objective evidence, and makes decisions based on that. It takes into account my history, my values, my future goals, and the kind of person that I aspire to be. It doesn't silence the other voices, but rather listens, acknowledges, and acts according to reality. This is my gut instinct. It was difficult to distinguish it from other voices at first, and it was an incredibly weak voice in a very loud room. Now I know it's there, however, and I, I know what it sounds like and what it feels like physically and emotionally for me when that voice speaks up. It's getting stronger every day. The whole question of gut instinct is something I find really fascinating and I'd love to hear your thoughts about your experiences of your gut instinct and whether you think such a thing even exists. You can get in touch with me by emailing hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, at becomingwhoyouare.net or by visiting www.becomingwhoyouare.net and leaving a comment on the blog. We also have an active Facebook community which you can find by searching Becoming Who You Are on Facebook. Today's resource is an iPhone app called Live Happy. It's a positive psychology app that encourages you to be more mindful of all the good things in life. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of positive psychology. However, I really enjoyed this app. It has different elements that cover gratitude, your social life, savoring special moments and future goals. The app's only available for iPhone right now, so I'm afraid if you use Android or any other kind of phone, you won't be able to download it. If you do have an iPhone and would like to find out more, you can download the app from the iTunes store. It costs 69 pence in the UK, which probably means it's about a dollar in the States. I just want to say at this point that I don't receive anything in return for talking about resources on this podcast. Anything that I mention, any websites, books, apps, etc., I talk about simply because I've used it and I found it very valuable. So if you have any resources that you found useful, I'd also love to hear from you. Thanks so much for listening. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch, you can do this by emailing me at h-a-n-n-a-h at becomingwhoyouare.net or by going to www.becomingwhoyouare.net and leaving a comment on the blog. I look forward to talking to you again very soon.